I have been asked to speak at a TED talk. Oh my god! What? I've been offered a TED talk. It was in my bucket list. Yes, but not this soon. But I could inspire so many people. I love your attitude, but what are you going to talk about? There are so many options. We'd better get ready. And then I remember something. And some years ago, I'd seen a TEDx that I still remember now. It got me thinking because I was like, how is it that I still remember this talk after so many years? There must be something good about it. And this, you're going to see, is a very funny video, but it's super smart, it's super clever, and most importantly, it really teaches you a lot about how a good TED talk should be. So let's watch it together. Hear that? First thing, always, always, always create something wow at the beginning. Hear that what? I didn't hear anything, did you? I didn't. That's nothing. <laughs> That's why, <laughs> because it was nothing. <laughs> okay, but uh, uh, this raises a very important point that we're going to see. Which is what I, as a speaker at today's conference, have for you all. I have nothing. Nada. Zip, zilch, zippo. Nothing smart, nothing inspirational, nothing even remotely researched at all. <laughs> okay, so here, very important, when we start a speech, we need to say what we're going to talk about. And he's very, very clear in this. You can have no doubt about what the topic will be because it is nothing, not that kaput, zippo. What did he say else? I don't know, but <laughs> very, very, very clear, okay? And also notice how he started already, but we'll see it better later. Um, he started already to move and use his gestures, his body movements in order to create engagement, although his topic is nothing. I have absolutely nothing to say whatsoever. And yet, through my manner of speaking, I will make it seem like I do. <laughs> so, Notice how he not only uses his hands, like through my manner of speaking, but also the pace of his voice and the pitch that goes high in order to create that engagement. So through my manner of speaking, I will seem like I do. So you don't get bored even if he's talking about nothing. Like what I am saying is brilliant. And maybe, just maybe, you will feel like you've learned something. This guy is genius, guy. Okay? There's every second there's something very, very smart. So look at this. He talks about feel. So maybe you will feel. And when he talks about feeling, what does he do? He lowers the pitch. He starts focusing on going deeper because when we talk about feelings, feelings are inside. So you need to use a lower tone of voice so that people can connect more. Now, I'm going to get started with the opening. I'm going to make a lot of hand gestures. I'm going to do this with my right hand. I'm going to do this with my left. I I'm going to adjust my glasses. And then I'm going to ask you all a question. Uh, by show of hands, how many of you all have been asked a question before? <laughs> <laughs> so, for sure, this part, uh, I love it. Uh, asking questions, why is that important? Because, of course, you want to talk with the audience. You're not just talking by yourself, it's not a documentary, you, it's a talk. So, you are interacting with the audience. And even now, where most TED Talks are done online, it is important to interact with the person that's in front of you. So, what do you do? You can ask a question. Like, of course, if you're online, maybe don't say, raise your hand, because... No, but you can really talk with people in a way that gets to them. So asking them to think, asking them to imagine, asking them to picture what you're talking about so that they are with you. Okay, great. I'm seeing some hands. And again, I have nothing here. <laughs> now I'm going to react to that and act like I'm telling you a personal anecdote. Something to break the tension, something to endear myself a little bit, <laughs> something kind of... Uh, embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> so oh my god this is genius so of course when you have a TED talk what should you do you should create connection with the audience so what do you need to do this way of being a bit 
embarrassed at times or saying a personal anecdote, something that the audience can connect with, that makes you feel like you are not above there, even though you have authority, we're going to see how to build that, but you are still with them. And this is something that communication-wise is amazing. <laughs> and you guys are going to make an awe sound. It's true. It really happened. <laughs> and now I'm going to bring it to a broader point. I'm going to reel you back in. See how he changed his tone here? So from being like funny or embarrassed and so on, then he said, okay. And then I'm going to make it to a broader point here. And the way in which he used his voice there was like amazing because it's like, okay, now you hear that he is going to get serious. I mean, talking about nothing always, but that's the purpose. I'm going to make it intellectual. I'm going to bring it to this man right here. Now, what this man did was important, I'm sure. But I, for one, have no idea who he is. I simply Google image the word scientist. <laughs> so besides the fact that he's like joking, of course, uh, why is this important? Because you, if you're discovering a theory or talking about a theory, it's important to have someone that uh, validates that. So a very important scientist, as you see this, this guy here, that is what validates what you're talking about. And now, you see, I'd like it to seem like I'm making points, building an argument, inspiring you to change your life, when in reality, this is just me buying time. Now, <laughs> so, uh, he was just buying time, as you said, but look at how he did it using a slide, not too many words. Very often I see super overcrowded slides. It's just, you don't want to look at them. What did he do? He used the slide and with the remote, just me buying time. Synchronize with what he's saying, grabbing the attention there and using supports effectively. If you don't believe me, let's take a look at the numbers. This is a real thing that's happening right now. <laughs> the number of talks that I'm giving is one. <laughs> So numbers, again, validate what you're saying, if they are real, okay? And these numbers are all real. You're going to see that. Interesting facts imparted thus far in said talk. Well, that's going to be a zero. My height in inches is 70.5. Note the 0.5 there. Note the 0.5 there. So always point out when there's that tiny little detail that people may have overlooked, but that can be very, very important for your point. 2 times 6 equals 12, and then interestingly enough, 6 times 2 also equals 12. That's math. 352 is a three-digit number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then almost immediately following that, we get 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, to add more filler here, I'm going to give you a couple more numbers to consider. And now, look at how he says the next numbers. It's like amazing. Numbers can be extremely boring. And there may be parts in your speech in which are extremely, not boring, but like a lot of facts and so on. So you want to make it engaging. So observe how he does that. Uh, 18, 237, 5,601, two points. So first of all, what does he do? He starts with small, he pauses, he goes up, and he shows surprise, like, 5,601, it's like, it's not just 5,601. There's a huge difference in how you say it. 0.6 million, four. He goes back to smaller numbers, so it creates variety. Four, 24, staggering. <laughs> staggering, this is one of my favorite parts, when he says staggering. <laughs> These are real numbers, all of them. And to follow that up, let's take a look at some graphs. Now, if you take a look at this pie chart, what you're going to see is that the majority far exceeds the minority. Make sure that when you have pie charts, they are all actually true. And this is undeniable. Everybody see that? Cool, isn't it? And again, oh my God, every second there's something amazing. So again, he didn't just show the pie chart, but he asked people, Everyone see that? Everybody see that? Why? Because you need to make sure that when there are technical stuff, people don't get lost. So you ask some questions to grab their attention back, as if it was needed here. And let's take a look at this bar graph, because it shows similarly irrelevant data. Now, 
I'm doing this because I'd like to make it seem like I've done my homework. If you were, say, watching this on YouTube with the sound off, you might think, huh, okay. <laughs> this guy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Another great thing. He didn't say, you may think that this guy is, knows what he's talking about. What, what did he do? He made it sound like if it was exactly you talking. And so basically he's replicating the voice that you may have inside your head. So, huh, this guy knows what he's talking about. So he's inserting a thought inside your mind uh, in a way that's funny because that's his style, but is also very, very uh, accurate communication wise. But I don't. I'm floundering, panicking, I've got nothing. I'm a total and utter phony. But you know what? I was offered a TED Talk. And damn it, I'm gonna see it through. <laughs> Now, if you take a look behind me, these are just words paired with... And here, notice another genius thing, because what did he do? He's talking about nothing, it's obvious, okay? But every now and then, and this is one of those moments, he explains why he is doing it. So he's like, Observe, if you were just looking, and that's undeniable, if you were just looking without the sound, you may even think that I have, I'm talking about something relevant. So it's explaining why, and it's also giving you a reason in terms of why he chose this topic, because he said, listen, I have nothing to talk about, but I've been offered a TED talk, I'm not going to say no. And this is a bit how I feel. <laughs> Now I do have things to talk about, stay tuned for that, but I understand the feeling. Thought-provoking stock photos. I'm going to point at them like I'm making use both of my time as well as your time, but in reality, I don't know what half of them mean. And now as these continue, I'm just... Observe the slide here. He put different kind of words, simple, harder, and then here, for example, there's one that's it uh, italics, okay? So here there's, there's one word that's in italics, just to... Because when you use slides, you should actually vary the way in which you use the slides so that you can point out important things. I'm going to start saying gibberish. Wagga wa, gabba gabba, turkey, mouth in a mouth, chip, trip, my dog skip. <laughs> my dog skip is the second favorite part of this talk for me. <laughs> my dog skip. Rip it and dip it, Richard. I'm an itty bitty baby bopper and I'm hungry in my tum tum. Brad Pitt, Uma Thurman. Names, things, words, words, and more things. And see, it feels like it might make sense, doesn't it? <laughs> Again, engaging with the audience, doesn't it? And going out with his pitch so that he really, really engages. Like maybe, just maybe, I'm building to some sort of satisfying conclusion. I mean, I'm gesticulating as though I am. I'm Gesticulation, very, very important. I mean, in Italian talking, so I know how important gesticulating is. Pacing, I'm growing in intensity. I'm taking off my glasses, which, by the way, are just frames. <laughs> I wore them to look smart, even though my vision is perfect. <laughs> And now I'm going to slow things down a little bit. I'm going to change the tone. Observe how magistral this is using the tone, even if you don't know what he's going to talk about and you know already there's going to be nothing, what happens? That slowing the pace, lowering the pitch, he focuses on the fact that he's about to get to the conclusion, the important point. I'm going to make it seem like I'm building to a moment. <laughs> and what if I was? Amazing, isn't it? What can you do? Life's a roller coaster. <laughs> Look at the quote here. I, I, I want you to watch it again. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? What can you do? Life's a roller coaster. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if there's one thing you take away from my talk, I'd like you to think about what you heard at the beginning, and I'd like you to think about what you hear now. Towards the end of the talk, it is important to link the dots, create the common thread if it wasn't clear already. So think about what I talked about at the beginning. Think about what I talked about now. That's very, very important. Because it was nothing and it's still nothing. Think about that. Or don't, that's fine. And now I'm going to stop talking.
Thank you. Now, you see why I love this speech and you can you understand why even after years, because I don't even know when I watched it last, it was still stuck in my mind because he's a genius, first of all. I Google him and I realized that he's an SNL writer. So he's very, very good with comedy, of course. But what did he do? He used to comedy to convey a very important message and a lot of technique. Because if you observe that and you just fill it in with the words that you want, you can really create an amazing speech and uh, understand how to connect with the audience, how to play with your voice, how to use whatever tool you have inside your voice, your mouth, your movement, your gestures, everything in order to give value. So, just to quote him, if you remember what I was talking about at the beginning, if you remember what I'm talking about now, I will keep in mind all these steps when I'm preparing for my TED talk and I will keep you updated and I will make sure to share it with you as soon as it's out. In the links below, I will also leave you the link to the original video because it deserves to be watched as many times as you need and want. And uh, please let me know in the comments which one was your favorite part because I'm very curious about that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.